Hi, I'm Dan. And I'm James. And welcome to the Cornwall Property Podcast, where every week we bring you the latest news, hot topics and guidance around the Cornwall property market. Stay tuned to be informed, inspired and to have any of your property related questions answered by trusted local property professionals. Welcome back. I'm Dan. I'm James. And we are here with episode 65 and a very special guest. We've got Rod- Rodri McCatty. Rodri, welcome. Thank you. Do you say everyone's very special? I do. Yeah, I do. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, we've got um, Rodri has uh, ventured up down, up to Bodmin uh, to join us. And Rodri has got a wealth of experience in property. And um, we're really honoured to have you here. And thank you for your time as thank well. You. I know you're going to drop a lot of value for our listeners. And um, no, no pressure now. Yeah. This up to you, aren't I? Yeah. Um, but again, as you guys are regular listeners, I'm sure. Thank you ever so much for joining us once again. Um, we again are here to inform, educate, inspire you guys. To get involved with property, trying to bridge this gap with the Cornwall housing housing crisis. There's a lot of empty homes, properties, derelict properties, unsafe properties on the market or, or not on the market currently. And we want to try and educate you on how to pick these out. Rodri can obviously give us a bit more expertise as well on, from his background. And um, we want to bring these properties to the market and help bridge this gap from people needing homes. And they're being empty homes. So um, how can people get in touch? Yeah, absolutely. It's not just us, the people who deliver it. It is also you guys who view and listen to it. So you, you can get in contact with us uh, by going onto our social media platforms, such as Facebook and Instagram. Alternatively, you can send us an email on podcast at cl-property.com, where Dan and I are waiting here to uh, hear your questions and hopefully bring some value and answer them. For sure. So I'm sure you're thinking, well, who the hell is Rodri? Rodri Rod, what's Rodri do? Rodri! Who are you? What do you do? So I'm a I'm a surveyor uh, of many things. I've got a, a couple of job titles, um, but I say my main my main kind of gear is basically surveying for a company called Camshaw Homes. Um, you know, I do residential surveys and valuations for, for non lending purposes um, for properties basically in Cornwall and Plymouth. Um, Fantastic. And just for just for to, for those that are probably thinking, well, why would I need a, a surveyor if it's not for lending? What what other, where would you cover that? What sort of reasons would you go out to? To value a property. So to, to value a property, uh, help to buy loan redemptions, uh, probates, tax gains purposes. Um, you know, there, there's multiple reasons why you'd need a red book valuation. Um, I think having some flash letters after my name just means that it's more substantial in the name of the law and the HMRC government. So uh, that's why you might need me. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. And I say, rodri has been in property for quite some time. You have been across Cornwall in Devon as well, predominantly there. Your that's your patch with Camshore, is that right? I don't like crossing the bridge. Don't I get a bit you. dizzy. It's um, that payment at the Tamar that gets you, isn't it? It's gone up two sixty. Two sixty. I don't know. Uh, but yeah, so all of Cornwall, um, basically everywhere and everywhere I've been. Last week I was in Lou, <laughs> Saint Ives, and uh, I was in Bodmin as well. Wow, all um, over. Yeah, so we covered a lot of miles, um, but it good. <clears throat> it gives you a good. Uh, array of the different kind of categories and areas of the of the county so it's quite yeah, nice so we'll say you've obviously got a lot of experience and part of our the way people that listen to, uh, and know james and i we we buy property we uh, refurbish property add value where we can and on the back end we put a mortgage on the property and hold on to it and let it out to locals so the valuation side of it is just so so important for us and, and i know other developers and, and investors in the area the valuation side of it we often get questions oh how do we value a property or how do we get the gross development value so hopefully we can just help uh, give people a bit more to do on that later on but uh, guys you are listening to this podcast because you want to give a uh, bit more information we're here for the market update episode so we have got three articles for you guys to to here today uh, myself james and rodri have picked an article each and uh, yeah we'll, we'll share them with you now so first of all for those of you listening um, and have been paying attention to the to the news we've obviously had the spring budget this week da, 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 um, da, da, da. so the spring budget that's not a lot to report in all honesty property related wise so the, the headlines that i've got here and again anyone interested the links to all these articles are in the show notes so as household budgets are squeezed with higher mortgage rates and the cost of living pressures this budget was was mainly focused on growth uh, and make working on economy and the job side of things so the budget had a direct well very little direct out um input and impact on the housing market stamp duty is remaining unchanged there's no big changes for landlords and um, other than the lower level of tax free gains before payroll capital gains there's not a lot to really report on the property side of things obviously it, there's concerns there people are, are rabbiting on on just how much of an issue the housing crisis is with regards to the uk in a whole like there's a lot of people still needing homes people can't afford the cost of living being one as a um, another one to point out, but um, the Chancellor's mainly focused this budget on stimulating the economy and jobs. Now, arguably, 
by getting more people into jobs, the affordability will be increased. So I suppose you could look at it as a long winded way there. But yeah, as a property investor, property enthusiast, I, I was hoping for a little bit more, but um, it I is what it is, really. <laughs> yeah. So again, don't think there's anything really to pick out. It was more a case of just for those of you who've seen the budget, probably wondering, oh, well, is this going to affect us in any way? Property wise, there's not a lot to report, sadly. So um, it's not a really positive news or negative news. It's more of just a little <clears throat> bit of an informative one for me. Um, I don't think there's much more to add on that person. I don't really want to talk about it. <laughs> no, fair enough. Do you want me to do one, Dan? Yeah, what have you got for us, James? Yeah, in terms of lending, there isn't that much sort of change on rates. I know most of you, my viewers, our viewers and listeners, know I deal with the financial side, but there's no real change at the moment. But uh, we shall see what happens over the next coming weeks. But I did find an article uh, which I think could be relevant to a lot of people at the moment, especially as you've touched upon, Dan, with the cost of living at the moment. Everybody's just feeling the pinch in so many ways. But my headline is from mortgagestrategy.co.uk uh, from a report by Savills, which says a bank of mum and dad has extended by nine billion pounds in 2022. It says that it is a rise of almost four billion since 2019. The report adds that 170,000 first time buyers, 46% of all first time buyers in 2022 drew help from family, which is down on the 198,000 counted in 2021. Savills expects this proportion to rise to 61% this year in 2023. However, pointing out that it does occur only two in five first time buyers will be buying their first home as a solo, which to be honest with mortgage rates and all that type of stuff, that doesn't really surprise me. And it also says that both higher mortgage rates and the end of the help to buy scheme are described as being factors uh, for this. So it seems like lots of people are reaching out to mum and dad. I can certainly see why it would be the first time buyers. But I wonder whether and you might want to comment on this, guys, that our parents sort of thinking if they do have money and it's sat in the bank, which, let's be honest, isn't really doing a lot at the moment in terms of interest, that maybe they can help their children, which... The, their inheritance might come at some point but if they can make a bit of money in the meantime and you know lend them deposits their professional fees to help get them on the housing ladder that, that you know their son's daughters can actually pay them a rate of return but Dan any comments? Well, so I'm going to steal Rodri's law. My mum and dad haven't got nine billion. That's what you said to me a minute ago, wasn't it? <laughs> this is over since 2019, <laughs> oh, by the way. Quite, so yeah. a bit of time. Well, a bit of inflation as well, then. It should be a bit more than that, right? Um, <laughs> but yeah, I think it's a no-brainer, really. If I can't afford and I need to get on the ladder, we've, we've drummed on this. It's really important. If you can get a foot on that ladder, it, the value in that long term for you is massive. It's so, so, so big. So just trying to get that foot on that ladder. Now, you're in a bit of a rut, mainly, if you're, if you're letting or you're renting, because the rents are, rents are increasing, yet the wages aren't really following suit. So you're probably going to struggle to save much each month to actually then start building that deposit up. So if you're trying to get that first foot on that ladder, then you're going to need some help. Most commonly, I'd imagine, would be first call mum and dad if it was if you were lucky enough to, to have that as a step. But how, you, you own your own home? I do. Yeah. Did, I you, do. did you get well help, help from mum and dad at all? Uh, no. Uh, I think The thing is, I don't think it's... Um a new thing that people need help from mum and dad no. uh, because putting a, a you know a mortgage down uh, a deposit down a mortgage has always been a hard thing to save for and for first time buyers they're often at the age where they haven't had a great deal of time to save so mum and dad is always been an option the fact that it's rise might be a reflection of the cost of living crisis and the fact that people have got even less money to save um, I was beneficial of the 105% mortgage when I got my first oh, house wow um for, for obvious reasons, they don't exist anymore. <laughs> um, you know, borrowing as much as the house is worth and then some. Um, but, you know, without that, I, you know, I might not have been on the market now. I was lucky I made a bit of money on the first house I bought and sold. And then with that, I put deposit on my second one. And, you know, it goes from there. So it could be a double pronged attack that obviously people can't afford to save because of cost of rent, which is spiraling. Mm, um, mm. And obviously cost of living. But, you know, the, the mum and dad have always been there. It just might be that kind of... What I'm nervous about, Robbery, is I've got three kids. <sighs> I, to save nine billion, I've got a bit, a bit of saving to do. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I, I had help. We had help, me and my wife, um, before we were married. And with our first property we bought, we, um, I think, yeah, we got five grand off our parents just to help towards that deposit, um, just to get us over there. But and, and ironically, I know we've been speaking about it over the last couple of podcasts, but the mortgage payments are generally less than the blooming rent at the minute. Mm. That's, that's the ironic mm part of it really yeah so i remember we were had a we had a we were in dorset at the time actually we were teaching in dorset and our rent was 800 pounds but our mortgage was uh 650 but it was obviously getting that mortgage was the hardest bit so 
it's it's, it's all pigs and troughs and it's just getting yourself in that ladder as much as you can. But again, like yourself, Rodri, from that first property, we did added some value and then we pulled out more money on the back end to mm. then move up the ladder um, when we moved back down to Cornwall. So it, it's, it's But just it is a ladder, isn't it? It is exactly So, that. I mean, obviously, I've got two kids. I will just choose my favourite. Yeah, of course. Um, and they'll get a house. Um, the other one... May get married. <laughs> or stay at home. So, <laughs> fingers crossed for marriage. Um, but yeah, and it's, it's just that... You, if you give them that initial help at the beginning, you, you might, I mean, they might not be wanting it in return. The mm. parents, any parent worth their soul probably is gifting it to them. Of realistically. Course, yeah. um, and you have to write that anyway for the lending. As yeah, you? You exactly. It, which it? I would hold to my parents to, to write it. with. I've got a plaque on the wall. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but Just no, remember. as I said, you, you know, you want to give your kids a, a help up. But I, it's, it's not a new thing. No. I don't no. think the increase is probably directly related to the current economical climate we're in. Um, but with every economical climate, it swings and roundabouts at eleven trough. So mm. it's just it's a sign of the the kind of inflation and direction things have been going over the last two three years. I, I'm not surprised to to hear that, but it doesn't necessarily mean it's going to spiral out of control and continue. And ninety eight percent of parents will be giving their kids money. No. no, of course not. And with the cost of living, parents are still got to afford their living, haven't they? So. Again, works both ways, I feel. But um, Yeah, absolutely. I think for, for me, it was slightly different. I bought my first property in 2013 and I was for me, it was pride. Uh, I just didn't want to ask for the money. And if I had asked, I think they probably would have done. So I tried to be clever, I finished university and I didn't really do anything to my degree related. I wanted to go off and get some decent money. So I went and worked on uh, yachts, tax-free money overseas for three years to save a deposit. But looking back at it, I think I probably should have asked you know because they would have wanted to help yeah Yeah, no that's it but it's just a pride thing but i think as you said you know it's now more than ever it costs a living the people have got no choice and if parents have got money in the bank hey they want to help then get that help don't be afraid to ask is what i'm saying for sure brilliant stuff so it brings us to our final one rodri you brought this one to the table it's uh, an an interesting one here so your uh, article is uh, Cornwall ruined by second homes and airbnbs again links to all these are on the show notes but uh, yeah what brought this one to your attention? Well, it's, it, the, the, the title's not necessarily reflective of my mood towards it. Yes, I. it's quite close to my heart. Obviously, I'm not Cornish. But I've lived here for like 18 plus years. My wife is Cornish, born and bred, and my kids are, and my in-laws and stuff like that. And particularly where I live down in West Cornwall, I, I do see how all these Airbnbs and holiday lets are basically making towns ghost towns in the summer, uh, in the winter, um, because they're just there for the tourist side of things. Um, and they're really nice places as well. I mean, you look at St. Ives, you look at Mausel, mm. um, even to an extent Newland now. Um, they're not what they used to be because of this kind of new holiday. I mean, the Airbnb thing in particular, people are using that because they don't necessarily have to pay the 25% commission for a holiday let um, agency um, and they can just do the weekend here or there. Mm. So, um, but for me, it's more looking at the what what, what could be done to rectify this, there is a place for tourism mm-hmm. in Cornwall. Um, I don't, I said, don't quite mean these figures, but a certain amount of the Cornish GDPR is based on tourism. Of course, yeah, yeah. And there's jobs in there for a lot of people um, and the local community which they need to get on the housing market um, or pay their rent. Uh, but also, there's a shortage of properties which, for the majority of the winter, are empty. So, what what can be done to kind of balance, not not replace either or, but you know, how can we balance that kind of Definitely. deficit? And, and and from experience from um, looking at the legislation, the nice thing because we're we're kind of eyes on the market constantly and the what's going on. Like in Wales, they've actually got incentives now or trying to discourage it. And similarly, for these reasons that you've mentioned, Rodri, and they actually uh, charge uh, more council tax for a second homes. So they you're actually penalised in that respect. If you've got mm. a second home, um, you'll pay more council tax as a result. There's legislation <laughs> as well, so it's they're kind of like deterring you or penalising you for having this second home um which rightly or wrongly depending on your your stance on it um you could be arguably well you're bringing more you're bringing tourism to the to the town on city but not all throughout the year depending on what it is depending on what the property is but you're also giving jobs to people as well um but i also appreciate we've got as this whole podcast is geared up is it's, it's we've got a lot of people needing homes and if there's empty homes available sat there it's, it's that frustrating kind of balance there too it's a t- i mean i get i get that i mean st ives have got a i think they had or have a levy on second home council taxes or certain things like that where's the benefit in that for me though because ultimately all it is, is it affects their margins and they'll adjust their figures accordingly um and ultimately all you're doing is you're increasing the council tax payments which how how is that helping 
the the local that can't afford a house. That's filling the coffers of Cornwall Council and stuff like that, which I know they need money. Don't get me wrong. I'm not naive in that regard. Um, but that's not it's not resolving the Big issue. It's not I suppose. Is no, it? it's, it's not. Yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, when you come to holiday lets, it's a profit and loss exercise. If you're making a margin, brilliant. If it's less than you were making before, it's not ideal, but it's still a profit um, and it's still a business model. Um, ultimately, it might mean you just need to buy another house to to increase your margins yeah. again. And, and similarly with with HMOs, house and miles occupancy again, bills have gone up considerably. And a mm. lot we offer, for example, uh, bill bills included, which is what a real is a big positive and um, a big selling point for tenants mm. is because they know what they're paying every month. But again, if you start bills keep going up, well, what's going to happen? We're not going to end up taking the hit. We're going to have to increase the rents, and then it'll just follow suit. So I completely see where you'll go. In your well, James, what, do you want to chuck anything at this one? Yeah, I would say uh, the Airbnb is is a good product for the Americans. Uh, that they designed it, and I can see why it would be attractive for people to rent their homes out. If we look at the last few years where we've had COVID come into the mix, uh, the staycation has become more popular than ever because people physically couldn't go on holiday abroad, but they could stay in their own country, in their own little bubbles and that type of stuff. So Airbnb has pitched it at a good time in a way because it's really got going traction in the last five years. So people just thinking, do you know what? Uh, well, we're not going abroad this year. Uh, let's just rent our own house out and we'll go and stay in a friend's house. Everybody was doing it. So on top of that, I also know a lot of locals now that turn their homes into Airbnbs and they go to Bali for the winter uh, and they, they can live out in Bali whilst they're, they're, they're letting their home. So it's double-edged sword here. It's also a lot of locals are doing Airbnbs as well. But from the second home side of things, if it's somebody in London who owns like an Airbnb, I'm fully immersed in, I think it should be that you, you're not just letting it out you know, for one or two weeks of the year, and then you get these so-called ghost towns mm. uh, in the winter months. I think you need to have it all year round, uh, which will, you know, create jobs for locals, all that type of stuff. But yeah, it's going to be interesting to see because because cost of living, like we discussed in the other article, is, is so bad at the moment. You know, people can't afford to go abroad. So these Airbnbs are going to get more popular however what is definitely on the cusp and we've talked about this uh previously in other episodes is that there is going to be regulation to airbnb because anyone can just chuck their house out there rent it out there's no correct uh, fire procedures in there there's not it's not marketed correctly and it's not safe that people are just trying to skim on the money but when that regulation comes in i think it will deter the amateurs really and it will be done as a more professional business and if people are spending the money to do it as a professional business they won't just let it out for four weeks of the year they'll actually do it as look hey 300 days of the year you know we're gonna we're gonna let this out and that's a proper business and that brings in for the tourism but for the the other second homeowners uh who just do it for themselves or one or two weeks a year yeah i'm completely kind of not really for it because it's not fair and who wants a ghost town there is signs that i mean with the airbnb you touched on it you know that the staycation was a big boost for it um if you read the article it is actually it does state that when it was at the peak of it a train down to cornwall cost more than the flight to, to Greece. Really? Um, yeah, mental. So the the issue is that there is signs that it's coming back to normal though, because I, I mean, I, I help out my local, uh, my, my local, I help out my family business, which is a lettings company. And we've had a couple of people inquire recently who have Airbnbs that are thinking of reverting it back to AST tenancies and letting out on long-term. Mm-hmm. Um, benefit of that obviously is it's, it's for them, they don't have to cover bills. Um, it's occupied 12 months of the year and they're just getting that money kind of in and there's there's less overheads. Yes, less there's less income, well, but, hopefully. Yeah. They're, they're, but the, again, we talk about margins. They probably won't be too much different. Um, but the benefit is there's people in those houses and it's grown a community back mm. in the areas that have taken that kind of backward step because there was a lot of empty houses. They're now becoming full. And on the other side of that, the, the housing crisis, it's not being repaired. But it's there's a dent in it. Just plugging it as much as possible. Exactly. Putting tape on it. But it's only there's signs of progression in that area. But I think more needs to be done to encourage it. Um, mm. I don't know what. I don't know how. If, if I had those answers, I'd be working for the council. Um, <laughs> but I don't. But I think there needs to be a focus on that. I mean, again, with 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 my family business that I help out in, we we try and focus on the locals first. So we we give a kind of a first shout out to locals for. The local properties rather than people that come in. That's down. when you market them, right? Yeah. yeah, when you market them, there's like an initial 24 hour, 48 hour kind of scheme where we just kind of push it to local people and we won't accept applications from people outside of county just to help with that crowd, uh, housing crisis for the affected areas. I know people that grew up mm. in St. Ives, their family from St. Ives, mm. they want to live in St. Ives, can't get there, but they can't. Mm. 
because there's no houses and the houses they can afford uh, they can rent are astronomical because it's all supply and demand so yeah. and that very similar with ourselves we've got multiple properties uh, mainly like HMOs house shares and it's all local working professionals that mm. we're trying to house as well there we're, there, we're kind of like the middle ground we find HMOs are people for those that are have either just left home and they've got themselves a job and they can't quite afford to get themselves their own rental uh, accommodation mm. or it's those trying to downsize and save but it's generally that middle ground before leaving home yeah, and getting your first own own place. So, um, again, it's more and more the popularity of these right now is crazy, especially with all those included for the obvious reasons. Really, it helps you save and get you on the ladder. Exactly, it's that. that halfway house between living with your parents to owning a house. That there's, no, you know, back in the day maybe when the houses were six grand, but then you were getting paid hundred pound a month. Mm. So there's always needs to be, and you know, with your HMOs, obviously that that is a contribution and helps. The crisis because you're creating a, a, an extra rung in the ladder yes. which is much more mm -hmm. attainable than going from living with your parents and 60, working for a bar to put in 10 grand on a deposit just to get a 200 grand house definitely mm. so yeah. agreed yeah that's it well guys if you want to read a bit more onto rodri's article that is on inews and again the link is in the show notes so this is the part of the show where james and i pick our picks of the week so i dan have got a commercial property that's currently on the market that uh, is I think it's a good opportunity for maybe bring some residential property to the market. And then James has got a residential option. So I, if well, if you're watching this on YouTube, you can see the uh, the property on Rightmove, the link on Lifetime. If you're listening to this on your Audible device, then please uh, go on the show notes and there's a link to the Rightmove ad. So Rodri, this is what we've got here on this one. So this is in 4th Street, Red Roof. This is a commercial property currently on the market for 200,000. Uh, is Again, it was listed early this year in February, so it's not been on for too long. So a little bit of details about it. Um, again, there, this is one of those that offers in the region of 200,000. So maybe like a little camp, a little hook there to get you to have a little look in there. But um, I think personally, this is currently empty. It's the old M&Co property uh, building. It's sadly just another casualty to the commercial market on the high street. But what I do like about it is there's obviously services in here with regards to electric, water, drainage. Upstairs, for me, it has some opportunity there to potentially be converted into some residential. So good sizes. You could fit a good one, possibly two apartments over the top floors. But again, obviously all subject to planning, getting your professional consultants involved there, getting your, your architect, planning consultant in there. But um, yeah, it's just one that caught my eye. Again, lovely parking at the rear it's also got access to the rear of the property too so ticks a few boxes there residential wise and again it is such a big building it probably puts off quite a lot of commercial potential tenants so if you were to split this up maybe make the shop front uh, more just an office at the front downstairs mm. um, and then turn the rest into some sort of residential it might be a good way of one making yourself a little bit more money two bringing some property to the market but this is just one that caught my eye um any anything you've Anything springs to mind as a, as a surveyor that you think, oh, don't oh. buy it. <laughs> <That's> it yeah. <laughs> no, no, you, you kind of hit the nail on the head in regards to the utilities and side of things. I like the fact that it's a big shop front um, downstairs, probably puts people off uh, mm. because with big shop front comes a big kind of annual payment for, for the lease. Effectively, if you could divvy that down to make it more affordable, but then as the developer, you make your margins on the residential thing mm -hmm. in the regards to maybe two apartments upstairs and maybe even one downstairs. Um, you've got an opportunity to, you know, hopefully generate more activity on the high street commercially because it's a more affordable and more advertisable premises for maybe a local business if I wanted to get really into depth of it. Um, but ultimately also you're providing possible accommodation. Um, yeah, there's a lot to be involved. There's a lot of planning, a lot of permissions needed, um, a lot of legislation hoops to jump through. But ultimately, it, it is a very, for, for the right developer, that's a, a very attractive proposition. Definitely. And what I like about it is you've got separate access. So quite easily, you could chop that front, that, that shop front off the back, chop it off. It's nice and small. Obviously, you've got business rates that reduce the business rates for the property. So it makes it a bit more desirable for commercial tenants. Um, but again, it's well over 100 square metres. The, the rest of the property, access and parking at the rear. I think it ticks quite a few boxes in that respect, really. Parking's a big one. Um, so yeah, yeah two parking one. spaces is uh, that's amazing, especially uh, if it's on 4th Street and Red Roof as well. Yeah, that anywhere, would be especially there. But it's also a, vi uh, a viability box ticked as well. You Big can't spot. increase 
um, three residential units and say, yeah, but you got to park somewhere. Like that, no, 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 a big time. It's a bit. Uh, it's one of those uh, planning ticks, isn't it? Yeah. Essentially, amenity space. So you're looking <clears> at bin, bike storage, things like that. Normally, with it being town centre, but the fact that you got parking is a, is a big tick on that one, really. EPC apparently have a deal ready. Optimistic, Not very much so. Yeah. Um, let me <laughs> s- so again, these are all things to bear in mind. But yeah, that was the one that caught my eye. It's on with Charterwood Commercial, and uh, yeah, give them a shout. There's a link in the show notes. James, what have you got for us? I have got a residential property in St. Just uh, near Penzance. Uh, it is an end of terrace, two bed property uh, with one bathroom on freehold. It's on a random price, 218000 although I can see it was uh, reduced uh, on the 10th of March. Uh, so that's probably why the, uh, the seller is just bringing it down by a small proportion to what it was on. Um, it is on with uh, Whitlock's uh, sales and lettings, and it definitely needs full modernisation uh, throughout but yeah a two bedroom and a terrace property that is nestled along a traffic free street uh, and is but moments away from all your day to day amenities the property requires modernise modernization throughout but benefits from majority UPVC double glazing which from the pictures doesn't look too bad as, at all actually uh, so you might get away with that one uh, and enjoys a pleasant rear uh, courtyard but um, having done a bit more homework on this this has been empty for about eight months now this is a classic sort of property uh, that we're talking about being unencumbered nobody living there housing crisis in place could this be an attractive uh, investment which I think it can be to add value and to create a small family home for somebody for sure, boys. Yeah. What do we think? Go on, Robbery. As you, what's your, what's your, as a surveyor, what would you look at? Then you walk into this property. What would you be looking at? Or advising your 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 landlords that you work with? Um, yeah, to I look mean, for? on 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 before that, Saint Just. We talk about these holiday lets and stuff. Saint Just is an absolutely thriving community on on the absolute west peninsula of Cornwall, and it is like you say. There's loads of locals that need accommodation, so this is spot on for what what they're kind of looking at. Um, with regards to the property itself. You can tell it's been neglected. Not neglected, but it's just been left empty. Mm. A couple of telltale signs that, what, what do you reckon, 18, 1890s, 1880s mm-hmm. build, solid granite. There's going to be an element of damp in there. Um, you know, there's remedial measures you can take to, to sort that out. Um, but just living in it would help it. Biggest issue with that is probably it's concrete render on the outer face. Um, you know, stone walls originally built to absorb and kind of uh evaporate so, yeah. the, you know they were built with thickness so the water wouldn't penetrate and it would dry out naturally you start whacking concrete render like right, they have on the front renovation it's all you know the pointing it's trapping the moisture in the walls and obviously then it's, it's flooding breathing. through to the inside mm-hmm. so little things like that there's there's lots of little improvements you can make um to make it a more appealing property to you know sell on or or let out if you're looking to flip it and you know sell it or if you're looking to buy it as an investment opportunity but you know, there's a, there's a there's a nice little crack there. Is that the wallpaper or the wall? That looks like a meaty crack. That one to me. That's uh... be interesting to know whereabouts in the building that is, being an end terrace. But and uh, with it being a uh, vertical crack, what would you your, your assumptions? If well, it was? it's tough because I mean, ultimately, it's behind the render. So just because it looks like a vertical crack there, uh, the render will always crack in the in the weakest point. So it might be stepped cracking through the stonework if that's an external elevation. Um, I don't think it, it might be the. Is that the back bedroom? It looks that might be, be the side, yes, the gable yeah. end. So it'd be interesting to see what the gable end looks like on the actual property itself, um, where the drainage runs possibly, some slight movement. So this would be the back end up here, wouldn't it? I guess. Yeah, so you're looking at yeah that inner wall there. So, I mean, it, yeah, it looks like if you look at the drainage hatch down there by your cursor, yep. drainage channels probably run up the side of the property onto the main road possibly, mm-hmm. um, depending on where the, game, where the bathroom is. There might be some escape of water causing a bit of movement to one of the corners maybe. You know, I'm looking at the details on a property, so it's tough. To, <laughs> don't don't quote me with this, but again, no, no, it's really interesting just to hear your thought process. I That's, did. I um, there's a value coming up from it. I did. Yeah. I did a survey on a house a while back for a gentleman that's buying a place in Penzance, and there was a crack inside and outside of a cavity wall. Obviously, alarm bells if both leaves are moving. Um, but effectively, all it was is you open up the inspection chamber and you can see where the pipe came out, and then the other pipe was there's a massive gap. And you could stick a, a screwdriver in and all the soil was sodden and basically all the waste pipe from the bathrooms and the kitchens was running down this pipe and it's saturating the ground so much so that the, the foundations had sunk in the corner. Oh, no. It was a very expensive house, but the guy actually ended up, you know, he had a survey done on it to find out what the cause was or identified this. I recommend that they get a drainage specialist in to check all the pipe work. And basically what he did is he got the it repaired. He had a little bit of underpinning done that bottom corner. Uh, repaired all the cracks, 
Um, obviously recommended ongoing monument, but it wasn't, basically it was about 10, 15 grand's worth of repairs that was reflected in his renegotiated purchase price, mm. but ultimately the sale still went through. It doesn't, just because there is a movement and a crack, don't be dissuaded because just find out what it is. Mm. Is it? The, and the repairs. And there's, exactly. there's further conversations to be had. But. And again, it's why it's so important to have these surveys done, isn't it? Just to pick out these sort of things because he could have gone in that blind, naively, yeah, I like it emotionally and just got it. And now he's gotten stumped with, with a 10 grand cost that he didn't assume, uh, didn't, Budget and for, for budget yeah. for exactly. So the value in getting someone like yourself over there to check these sort of things again, it, as you said, it's it's an old property, great property. It's, you can see the mold in the corners. What I'm noticing here, obviously, all you've got storage heaters. They're not very big. Um, some of the rooms I can't even see heaters in. So there's no surprises like these bedrooms. I can't even see, but unless it's on this return wall here. But mm. at the same time, that's a doorway. I mean, don't I mean you look at a property like that and you see all the the, the condensation mold on the walls and automatically people are thinking, oh, it's going to be rising dampers. I'll be honest, in an 1890s Cornish property in St. Just, they probably ain't a damp-proof course. I think, <laughs> to get specific, I think uh, damp-proof courses became part of building regs in 1875 in London. In London. <laughs> Doesn't necessarily mean they're doing in St. Just in the 1890s. Down, yeah. Yeah. But, um, but no, but effectively, that could just be, it's not been heated. Those solid elevation, they're going to be cold. It's just condensation. And you said they're not breathing. The they're not so. breathing. It's sitting on a cold wall with a dew point and it's turning into mold because it's not moving. There's no ventilation. I've not lived in for eight months. So you live in yeah. it. Give it some proper heat. <laughs> yeah. You know, circulate the air around. A lot of yeah. these problems will probably resolve themselves as well. So Absolutely. Okay, one thing I love is a floor plan, Robbery, and I'm, I'm just looking here. Is a, I love a floor plan. And I can't really see where I can add a lot of value other than cosmetically. Um, I can't well, you, there's a clear lot of value there. You could add a second floor to the, oh, to the, the back. Area. Yeah. Uh, no, no. Oh, so extension at the back. You've got a rear extension. It depends, obviously, what kind of footings they're built on, but oh, you've got yeah. a whole new bedroom at the back there. Uh, off the wing here. You know, a little bathroom in the corridor and a, ba a bedroom at the back. What I'd also, for another thing I'd like to do is uh, on the old street view, as I did previously, I'd walk up and down the street on the street view and just see are there any kind of loft conversions in place already on others? For any precedent set? Yeah, exactly that. So, um, no, mooch. definitely. So, figures again, it's on for. Okay, let's yeah. on it. There we are here, look. Little loft conversion up on this side. So, no, interesting. But again, hopefully from you guys listening and watching, you just kind of get a bit of value in terms of how we are looking at these properties and what, for example, um, the surveyor himself would pick out and just don't necessarily be alarmed. And if, you, if you're concerned about something, get someone who knows what they're talking about to come have a look, put your mind at ease and actually give you a solution because ultimately all it is is a problem. You need to find a solution. The solution is going to come with a price and you just renegotiate. Um, again, this property... We can see that this has had a reduction. This one was on for 235. It's down, dropped down to 218. So again, there's obviously some motivation there. Uh, might be an opportunity to do some haggling. But yeah. uh, again... Third bedroom downstairs, immediately on the left. Bit tight. Mm, not down here. Oh, he wants to live downstairs, though. True. Uh, he's just used to be if you a got dog house, isn't he? If yeah. you've got a three-bedroom <laughs> three house, is your, is your lounge going to be big enough? Yeah, no, it's true. No, I like the I like the extension. You've already got yeah. you've got a footprint downstairs as long as the foundations are, are strong I mean, enough. If they're slightly shallow, you stick a timber frame one up yeah, there exactly, to yeah. decrease the light with the weight of it. Definitely, so, so there's definitely ways around it. But uh, again, fantastic. Well, guys, that brings us to the close of the market update episode. Thank you so much, Rodri. Lots of value given for sure. And uh, guys, just out of interest, if people wanted to get in touch with you, Rodri, for any anyway, valuation help or even to, to find out a little bit more about your family business, how could they do those things? Yeah, I mean, uh, I've, the, the family business, McCarty Property Group's got some social media outlets that you can get hold of through there. There's a website. Um, for, for the surveying and for valuation side of things, uh, Camshaw Homes is the company I work for. A uh, really good family-run company. Yeah, we've got national coverage, but it's very much a small family run business. So yeah. um, again, on you can get hold of me on LinkedIn or Facebook or whatever. Um, but effectively, yeah, just get Google Camshaw Homes. They're very prominent in the market. So yeah. Fantastic. Really, really helpful. Awesome. And just remember that you can get in contact with us here at the Cornwall Property Podcast on social media, such as Facebook, Instagram, but you can also drop us an email on podcast at cl-property.com. Fantastic. Well, guys, it's a goodbye from me. Goodbye from me. Until next time.